there were real divisions oh, between sure. these candidates. One of them was on an issue which was a surprise to me, which was when Senator Bernie Sanders said he supported voting rights for people in prison, felons in prison, including the worst of the worst. So listen to what Senator Sanders said, and then listen to the different other positions that the candidates carved out for themselves. Watch. I think the right to vote is inherent to our democracy. Yes, even for terrible people. People who are in, convicted in prison, like the Boston Marathon bomber, on death row, people who are convicted of sexual assault, they should be able to vote? I think we should have that conversation. While incarcerated? Yeah. No, I don't think so. So Bernie, yes. Kamala Harris, study it. Mm -hmm. Pete Buttigieg, no. Yeah, and one of the things you saw as a result of Kamala Harris's answer was basically Republicans come out and say, really, she wants to have a conversation about whether or not uh, the Boston Marathon bomber should be able to vote uh, in prison. Listen, the Democrats obviously want to have this discussion about voting rights. They're having it, for instance, in New Hampshire with voting uh, ID laws. There's been a discussion in Florida about uh, folks who get out of prison. That's something that, that voters in Florida uh, voted to allow. And so there you have Bernie Sanders being Bernie Sanders, staking out a very far left position on this, Kamala Harris essentially saying, huh, she has to study it. Uh, and then Pete Buttigieg, I, I think, really taking a, another firm uh, decision and probably a decision, I, I think, an approach that most other Democrats will take, which is to say that, listen, in, in, they're in jail, they are uh, deprived of some rights while they're in jail, but when they get out of jail, uh, then they should have their voting rights restored. The, the larger point is, I think Democrats yeah. are going to make voting rights a, a big deal today. Uh, the Supreme Court is hearing a case about whether the census can ask about citizenship. This sort of larger network of issues relating to the Republican Party's attempt not to count Democrats, whether it's not to allow them to vote through their absentee voting, early voting, felon voting. Most of those issues Democrats are united around. I do think that Bernie took a position that the others are uh, unlikely to take on f actual serving prisoners voting, but on those other issues, I think you're going to see a lot of unanimity among the Democrats. And maybe that is the point, that, that just seeing right now who is willing to carve out a bold position that they've thought about, whereas some candidates are still saying, well, we'll see, we'll study it. He's principled. It's a legitimate conversation to have, but he had to have known as he said that, that this is a series for lack of a better description, of Willie Horton ads that are just ready to be made. You're going to and Chris said that to him. Chris, yeah, you know, Cuomo said it immediately. Worst. Yeah, are going to be on the screen, or they're going to say, you know, this is someone that Bernie Sanders thinks should not sacrifice their right to vote. Let me just say, first of all, Eric Swalwell, who was with us last hour, said firm no on this. It took him no time to say, no, this is a bad idea. And I do think you are hearing from more people in the Democratic Party nationally looking at Bernie Sanders and his numbers in the polls, which are very high, consistently high. Yeah. To say nothing of how much money he has, right. which and, is yeah. also enormous. In his fundraising yeah. numbers, he is the clear frontrunner right now, and that makes a lot of establishment That's Republicans who Democrat. want to beat Donald Trump. Sorry, establishment Democrats, I'm yeah. so used to that. Yeah. Establishment Democrats who want to beat Donald Trump, it makes them nervous. It makes them nervous and it really makes them want uh, Joe Biden to get in this race. And he'll likely uh, get in at some point uh, this week. He's more of the establishment uh, favorite. This is a replay in many ways of, of 2016 mm -hmm. when you did have the establishment uh, coalescing around uh, Hillary Clinton being very anti-Bernie Sanders, essentially uh, saying that he was too far left. He was a Democratic Socialist uh, and that he couldn't win uh, the White House. But then you had Bernie Sanders supporters basically on uh, the, the the day after the election, saying Bernie Sanders could have won uh, the election if he had been uh, the, the nominee for the Democratic Party. So if you're Bernie Sanders, you feel like you're in a pretty good position. As you said, the fundraising has been off the charts. He's got a real dedicated uh, slice of the electorate. And in many ways, they haven't seemed to have moved uh, very much onto different candidates. Can I just say yeah. to, to Nia's point, uh, that dedicated base, they're not going anywhere. Right. That, that statement last night will not offend Bernie's supporters. And what we need to keep our eye on the ball is the proportionate nature of the Democratic vote in the nomination process. So that, you know, you're going to have a Super Tuesday. It'll involve Texas. It'll involve California. If Bernie locks up 25 percent of that vote, mm -hmm. whether he secures the nomination, ultimately, I think he'll be the one holding the cards in terms of who will be the nominee. Hmm. All right. So let's listen to what the candidates said last night about impeachment. Check this out. 
I believe Congress should take the steps towards impeachment. I think he's made it pretty clear that he deserves impeachment. I'm also going to leave it to the House and Senate to figure that out. If there's going to be any accountability, that accountability has to come from the Congress. Congress has got to take a hard look at that. At the end of the day, what is most important to me is to see that Donald Trump is not re-elected president. There is a third way to hold this president accountable, and that is by defeating him in the 2020 election. So leave it to Congress and the voters, not as perhaps a radical position <laughs> as we'd heard on some of the other stands. Right. I, I, I think other than Elizabeth Warren, there's pretty much unanimity among the Democrats, which is the Nancy Pelosi position, which is keep investigating. It's a good idea uh, for the Senate, uh, House Judiciary Committee to call Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, as a witness, but don't call in an impeachment proceeding yet. And, and I think politically, as well as substantively, that's that's the right decision. Brothers McConnish? Well, I <laughs> just think that there's a temptation for Democrats to overplay the hand that they've been dealt here. It's a very good hand. There's a lot of good substance. Those hearings that, that you're prescribing could be advantageous, but if they are placating the base because the base wants impeachment. They want this vote to be taken regardless of what the Senate will do. If they listen to those loudest voices, I think it'll drive the party into a ditch for the next election. But is there any sign of that happening? I mean, Pelosi, Nadler, they're all saying, yeah, no, we're, we're not doing that. impeachment. In, in light of the Pelosi phone call last night, the 87-minute call, I, I think there probably isn't. Joe Lockhart, who is here often, has a provocative essay, I think, today in The Times, arguing that the best thing for Democrats is to keep Donald Trump exactly where he is right now. They want him to be in position in the 2020 election because he's, he's the best liability that they can ascribe to Republicans. In, in sort of drawing out out of uh, the scrutiny, right? If you do uh, go forward with impeachment, filing those articles in the House, it goes over to the Senate. We know what's going to happen in the Senate. And then you ha essentially have uh, Donald Trump saying he's been exonerated and, you know, this is all over. But I if they kind of drag it out, uh, you can always have that as part of the conversation. What about the hearings, Michael? Don McGahn, is it worth Judiciary Committee yes. bringing Don McGahn in? Yes, it's, it's worth it's worth hearing from Robert Mueller. I, he, the top of my list would, would want to be to question Robert Mueller about how for 22 months many of us later labored under the view that he would reach conclusions that were never a part of his plan. Never, right? Never, never. a part of his plan. And, and sure, Don McGahn is someone you want to hear from. There are some select witnesses, but at a certain point, I think it goes too far. All right. Jeffrey, Michael, and yeah, Malika, well, thank, well, thank you. Much more in alignment yeah, I'm glad than we were last not, week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeffrey's come around. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Let's just say we agree more. There you go. I thought he was going to jump across the table I right now. No, I love my Sir Connor. <laughs>